Hey there, I'm back because I have a really cool knife I want to share with you. This is a German made Swiss Army style knife with a couple of really neat, unique features. Uh, and it's a really well made knife too, so I'm anxious to share it with you. The first thing you'll notice um, is that inlaid in the plastic scales in metal is the word browning for the uh, for browning the U.S. firearms company. Now, um, Browning is an old company, dates back like 140 years, was founded in Utah by John Browning, a legendary gun inventor. But from the very get-go, Browning knives have been made by other companies under license to them. And one of the first ones uh, to make their guns was Fabrique Nationale out of uh, Herstal, Belgium. And uh, today they own Browning. And uh, FNH also owns Winchester. So uh, Browning is a very legendary gun company known for shotguns, handguns. What's their name doing on an old knife? Well, if you know Browning, you know they also uh, market, uh, a brand, and sell a lot of other outdoor equipment. And um, they've had their own knife line for over 50 years. Now, as I said, this knife is made in Germany. Um, I'm not sure by who, but I can say that it is a very high quality knife. Um, this knife uh, has the same kind of quality that you would find on a Victorinox or a Wanger from this era. And how old this knife is, I can't really say. Uh, if a Victorinox or a Wanger had these vintage features, it would probably date from the 50s. Um, this, I know other companies carried on some of these parts and techniques a little longer. So, you know, maybe 60s, maybe early 70s even on this knife. I just really don't know. It's a guess. Uh, the scales are plastic, as I said. They're not um, Celador. I believe they're more like a Bakelite or something. Uh, they're nice and shiny. They've got some marks in them and wear from, you know, uh, wear some things and marks, but they're in good shape. And uh, you see exposed rivets, these fancy bird's eye uh, washers or rivets here at the end. And uh, exposed awl. This is the old style awl. And I can tell you that it's just sharp as a pin. And there you can see this knife has brass rivets. They're just uh, brass liners. They're just gorgeous. And they go really well with the black, I think. Um, this is a nice thing. Uh, as sharp as that is and as close as it comes to the, the end there, you can't snag it or engage it. So that's just well made. Um, other vintage features, I guess you would say, would be the can opener. It's that old-style can opener with the uh, vertical lift, so there's a notch here. The action on this knife is great. Everything's tight, uh, snaps open and shut. Everything's straight. There is a um, can opener. Sorry, a, a cap lifter screwdriver. Um, this is kind of like a huntsman, I guess you would say, in that it's got a saw and scissors. Here's the saw, a little different style. It is double toothed. I can pick that up in the light, um, but it's very sharp. Other than the main blade, I don't think this knife was used that much. Uh, the knife has scissors, if I can find a way to get those out. And again, if this were a Victorinox, I would tell you these are very vintage scissors because it has a single leaf spring, screw pivot, two nail nicks. Um, so it's in that style and they're very sharp and they're very effective. And then that brings us to the blades. Here's the small blade. It's a very pointed clip point blade. I put a new edge on it. It's very sharp, straight and full. And then here's the main blade. see right here. Losing my nails. Okay. It says browning on the uh, tank stamp there. And over here, made in Germany. But it doesn't specify by who. Um, blade's in good shape. It had some scratches. I have polished it and sharpened it. I was able to get a lot of the scratches out, but you can still see them, some of the smaller ones. But it's a good looking blade and it's full and it's sharp and it's straight. Again, good smooth action, good snap on this knife. Um, there is a tweezer, no toothpick, but the cool thing about the tweezers, they've got a brass end to them. If 
I can pick that up. That is really cool. And they're very stout. They're, they're a very thick, stiff, sprung steel. And they also have a nicely chiseled, again, if I can pick that up, nicely chiseled tip to them. So they're very effective. They fit in there really nice and snug. Seems to be like a hairline crack right here in the scale. Uh, maybe running along that tweezer channel. At first I thought it was a scratch, but uh, we'll call it a, a split there just to be on the safe side. But there's no movement in the scale. You can't even catch your nail in it. There's no space. So it's very stable. Now here's the uh, kind of the big reveal and the thing that I think is so cool about this knife. Instead of having corkscrews, a corkscrew or a um, Phillips driver on the back, it has this thing. What is that? Well, the seller that I bought this from thought it was a uh, sharpener. But that would kind of be, you know, having a sharpener attached to the knife you need to sharpen would be kind of like trying to clap with one hand, right? So um, I thought this might be something else, and sure enough, it turns out to be what I thought it was. It's an onboard ferro rod <laughs> for striking sparks and making a fire. So let me try that. Um, I think I was the first person to ever strike it. I've been striking it here on the back, so it doesn't show on the front. Um, but let me see if I can embarrass myself here, but uh, I think this is sharp enough. Yeah, look at that. Don't you wish Victorinox would have a model like that? How cool. All right, so uh, again, that's, this, uh, this is just a beautiful knife. It's a, a little bit heavy. Let's weigh it. In ounces, we got 4.87 ounces. So, you know, just about five ounces. That's kind of heavy for that size knife. And we have 138 grams. So, uh, it does not have any kind of a, a key ring. This would be something you would want to either carry deeply in a pocket or maybe in a sheath. And as far as the size, it looks about the same size as a Victorinox, 91 millimeter, but let's put the uh, calipers on it. Ninety millimeters. So and as far as being thick, nineteen. Okay. Yeah, I'm in love with this knife. I am going to sell it. You know, uh, anything that doesn't build my core collection gets offered for sale. But uh, it would be kind of bittersweet to have it sold. So uh, it, it will be listed on my Etsy shop. If you're interested, go take a look at it. Uh, sell it or not, I, I'm happy. <laughs> All right. Um, and just a few, uh, a few words of encouragement for everybody out there, including myself, before I sign off. Um, you know, if you've got a YouTube channel or you have a, a little enterprise of some type, you're trying to do something or make something, uh, don't get discouraged by the negative people that come along every once in a while out there. Um, you know, there's always just some people that kind of seem to take pleasure in trying to bring others down. And when you run into those people, just take it as a sign of success that, uh, that you're attracting that kind of attention. Um, I suppose that, you know, cyberspace is a little bit like the real world. There's just some bad actors out there. Um, and it's been my experience that usually these are people that really aren't doing anything themselves constructive. Um, they're, they don't have any content. Um, they're not making or trying anything. Um, so just, just ignore them. If, if what you're doing is good and truthful and, you know, honest, Keep working hard, uh, keep moving forward. You're always going to find some trolls under some bridges, but you just run across that bridge because they really can't hurt you anyway. All right. Well, thanks for watching and have fun collecting.